Hello and welcome to another episode of Karma Siknu, Nepali for to learn at home. Now so far you've learned about what happened in Kalanga, the battle that started it all. And you learned about how resourceful the Gurkhas were at the Battle of Fort Kunja. And of course, the heroics of Kulbir Thapa during World War I. But now, we're going to be jumping ahead 20 years to World War II to find out the vital role that the Gurkhas played. What better place to do it than here at the Gurkha Museum in Winchester? In September 1939, Adolf Hitler ordered his German troops to take over Poland. Two days later, France and Britain declared a war on Germany. It lasted for six years. The war came to an end in 1945 with victory for Allied forces led by Britain, USA and the Soviet Union. Over 137,000 Gurkha soldiers within the British Indian Army served in many places, including North Africa, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, Iraq, Syria, Persia, Aden, Palestine, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaya, the Dutch East Indies, and most famously, Burma. In total, the war tragically saw about 23,655 Gurkha casualties and roughly 9,000 deaths. In the last episode, you learned about the Victoria Cross and how it's the highest honour that can be awarded to any British soldier. In World War II, 12 were awarded to Gurkha units, 10 to Gurkhas, and 2 to British officers. But of those 12, 9 were awarded in Burma. But we're going to be looking at two in particular. One of them went to Tulbadur Poon, and the other to Michael Almond. Mad Mike Calvert, a brigadier who was leading the 77th Indian Infantry Brigade, which is part of the Chindits a group of specially trained soldiers that take their name for the Burmese word for lion. Their task? Take the city of Mogyam. But in order to do so, they needed to take a railway bridge, which was occupied by Japanese soldiers day and night. When they advanced on the bridge, they were under heavy gunfire from a bunker known as the Red House, which was 200 metres to its right. The whole of Tulbadur's section, aside from him and two other men, were wiped out. Despite this, the section commander led the two men to attack the Red House, but got quickly wounded and the other rifleman wounded shortly after. On his own, Dulbadur grabbed a machine gun and started charging at the Red House, firing mercilessly from the hip. He then ran across 30 metres of rough ground, broken tree trunks and craters created by grenades. The morning came and the sun rose behind him, giving the Japanese troops a clear view of him as they fired at him continuously. Against all odds, Dulbadur reached the Red House. He then fought in a close combat with the enemy, killing three before the five retreated. With the Red House his, he used the position to help the other Chindits in crossing the bridge. And on that bridge, was Michael Almond. He was just 20 years old and he had discovered himself as acting captain for the unit, leading all of his men. Just a few days prior, he was on the front line using his kukri and grenades to inspire his soldiers. Unfortunately, Michael was suffering from trench foot, a problem suffered by many soldiers in the war. This would be when their feet would be too wet for too long, leaving them unable to walk. Michael was determined to get his soldiers across the bridge he crawled through mud and holes, trying to destroy a machine gun nest. Unfortunately, he was tragically shot and killed. The Chindits were able to take the bridge in the end, thanks to the heroic actions of Michael and Tulbadur. Because of their bravery, they were awarded Victoria Crosses, which are now on display here at the museum. Join me on this last episode of this season, where we'll be looking at what happens when a Gurkha meets a tiger. See you then. <laughs>